welcome back out of Hog Mountain Baptist Church. If you would, stand and turn to page 113. Sing glory to his name. <clears throat> where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name. Hog Mountain Valentine Banquet will be February 10th. It'll be at 6.30 in Fellowship Hall. There is a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Um, the event is open to everyone. There's also additional sign-up sheets for the ladies' meeting and for a nursery worker. Oh, is that it? Oh, all right. Y'all will continue to pray for uh, some of those that are sick in church um, and those who will be traveling here later, maybe. Uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Kyle, will you lead us in prayer, sir? Amen. You can be seated and turn page 333. We'll sing, I'll fly away. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll 
four verses of Lifeboat and have a moment of fellowship after.
I was telling Miss Carol Pam that we had our anatomy scan today, and we appreciate your prayers. Uh, baby girl, not Skylin, new baby girl, is, is fine. Everything's going good, so we appreciate y'all's prayers of that. Um, I do have a picture of the ultrasound on my phone if you want to see. If Adam was here, I'd have him put, the, put it up on the, the big screens, but uh, we got those, so I can show you later. She's bald all so far. She looks bald, so that's, that's definitely mine. in the courtroom the judge turned my way it looks like you're guilty now what do you say I spoke up your honor I have no defense but that's when mercy Walked in, mercy walked in and pleaded my case. Go to the stand, God saving grace. The blood was presented that covered my sin, forgiven. Mercy walked in. I stood there and wondered how could this be that someone so guilty 
had just been set free. My chains were broken. I'd just been born again. The moment that mercy walked in. Mercy walked in and pleaded my case. Go to the stand, God saving grace. The blood was presented that covered my sin. Forgiven when mercy walked in. being here this evening. Uh, uh, those of you watching in Facebook land, I apologize. I didn't actually know how to turn us live, so I just figured it out in the back a couple minutes ago. So welcome to the service now that uh, Brother Cody's singing a special. I promise we didn't start at 730. That's just when I finally uh, got back to the center and figure out uh, what was going on. If y'all would, uh, several things to uh, remember in prayer and to just keep in mind. Um, pray for Miss Katrina. She had senior night for Jacob tonight for wrestling. Um, she didn't cry today, at least tonight, and I told her, I said, did you cry yesterday or earlier today? And she said, well, yeah, and so y'all uh, pray for her. She's uh, getting through that, but on, on a more serious note, if y'all would uh, remember Miss Lily in your prayer, she's got a stomach bug. Thankfully, the Martin stayed away just to make sure we didn't catch it, and I'm really thankful that they did. Love seeing them, but, uh, you know, don't. Don't, don't want to be around that uh, necessarily uh, <laughs> firsthand. So appreciate them staying, uh, staying away a little bit. But we've got several other people who are uh, uh, just sick or, or traveling or something of the sorts. If y'all would remember them in your prayers. One special prayer request, and we sent uh, some messages out earlier this week about that. If you would remember the family of Miss Wanda Keith, her daughter Christy passed away on Monday morning. And uh, just a tragic, tragic circumstance. She was only 36 years old. And uh, we, we went and spent a little bit of time with Miss Wanda on uh, Monday and uh, spent some time there with her and also got to uh, meet with Christy's husband. And uh, needless to say, they stand in need of a lot of prayer. Uh, Miss Wanda's pretty dependent on her daughter. And, uh, and those of you who haven't, haven't met her when she's come, um, she, she isn't able to drive. She's, she's blind and uh, dependent on her daughter to kind of get her to and from certain places. And uh, I assured her that we'd help, and her neighbors I know will help too, to make sure she's well taken care of and that uh, she's got everything she needs. Um, and something else I was failing to mention. Continue praying for Miss Lisa Page. That's what it was. Uh, just continue remembering her in your prayers, if you would. Uh, Brother Kevin... Um, We'll say, and they've, they're still doing some more testing on her. Uh, so if y'all would uh, remember her in your prayers, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Anybody else have anything they want to mention publicly before we have a word of prayer real quick? remember Miss Katie. Uh, in addition to that, my cousin, uh, Haley Wolf, uh, her and her husband, uh, she, she had her baby uh, yesterday sometime. So uh, y'all remember them in prayer, if you would, as they uh, come into a whole new life, a whole new world. So y'all remember them, if you would. All right. Uh, continue praying for Miss Elizabeth as well, as uh, they're, they're waiting on the baby to get here pretty soon. Uh, she's due next month, and uh, just pray all that would go go smoothly as God wants it to. But let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer real quick and then we'll move forward from there. Lord, we're thankful, God, for all that you've done. Thankful for all the blessings you've given us, God. We're thankful, God, to be in your house, uh, Lord, here tonight. And God, I pray that you'd just help us, Lord, as we try to open your word here for a little while and glean a few things from you. Lord, some things that may help our heart, God, uh, with, uh, Lord, circumstances and situations that seem to be going on all over the place, God. Uh, Lord, Lord, I, I pray that you'd just help us. Um, but, but Lord, we're... Um, we're standing in need of so many things, God, from these prayers and uh, from these requests that uh, that have made, made mention of. God, pray you be with Miss Wanda and her family. Uh, God, as they're making decisions and uh, as they're preparing for uh, Christie's funeral, God, I pray that you'd be with them. And God, just help them be that peace and that comfort that they need. Let her know everything's going to be all right. 
God, I pray that you touch those that are sick tonight, those uh, have a baby on the way and all the, the situations going on there, God. But most of all, I pray you help us learn uh, more about you, learn to grow in your grace. God, help us, Lord, to be better Christians. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the glory for everything that's done. In Jesus' name, amen. There was a preacher who uh, <coughs> he uh, took a church up in Iowa, <coughs> and he got up there and the... He didn't make it on Sunday. He ended up coming in for Wednesday night. Wednesday night was going to be his uh, his first service as pastor of this little church in Iowa. And uh, he, he he shows up there at the church, that, or uh, shows up in Iowa on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, a blizzard came through and blew in about five or six feet of snow. And uh, they he was sitting there thinking, man, we're, we're not, there's no way we're going to have church tonight. And he, he said he decided to go on anyway and see if anybody showed up. And he got there, and there was one old farmer there. And he said they, you know, had shoveled the parking lot and everything. He said nobody else ever showed up. And he said we were standing on the front porch and looked out across and saw an empty parking lot. And he said, well, I guess we can just pray and head home. And that farmer looked at him and said, well, I've never one time had one cow show up to the barn and me not feed it. He said, why wouldn't you feed me? So he said they went in the church house, they shut the door, that man got in the pulpit, he spit, he sputtered, he preached for an hour and a half. He got done, looked at that farmer, and he said, how'd you like that? He said, when that one cow comes, I don't give him the whole bale, just give him enough for him. So we're going to deviate a little bit. I was uh, uh, intending to be in the book of Mark. Um, I, I do want to move over and, uh, and, and um, uh, into, into something a little bit different just for tonight, but... Psalm chapter number 23, if you'll flip over there, very, very obviously um, familiar portion of scripture, not anything that, uh, that, that we may have that uh, would be necessarily new or, or special, but sometimes I think it's a review of the, uh, the things that, that we sometimes take for granted that sometimes do us the best good. And uh, the, the one thing we, we know for certain is we live in a world um, that's a world of darkness. We live in a world that's a world of uh, a lot of fear and the such. And uh, you never know what this world's going to turn around to you at any given point in time. I always heard people talk about, well, back when I was a kid, you know, this world was great and it was fine. And, you know, and, and look at what changes this world has made in my lifetime. And I was sitting there like, yeah, there's no way the world's changed that much in your lifetime. Like, you know, come on, go, go take your sleeping pill and go not, not grandpa. So, you know, what I wanted to say. But the reality of it is, even just in the 32 years I've been alive, I've watched a lot of things change, a lot of things happen. <clears throat> but I'm glad of one simple thing, that I still have the same God and I still have the same shepherd. Yeah. No matter what life throws at us, no matter what circumstances we may face in our life, I'm glad we serve a God that's still the same. Look with me here in verse number 1 of Psalm 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, and I want to break down this chapter just a little bit. There's one verse in particular I want to get to. But uh, when we look at the Lord being our shepherd, and we understand, and I made mention of this uh, back on Sunday, that sheep aren't exactly the smartest of animals in the world. They've got to be led to everything. They, uh, they'll suffer if, if, if they don't get taken to water, they won't drink. If they don't get taken to green pasture, they won't eat. They've got to be given everything that, they've, uh, that, that they need to live. But look at this, what it says about this. The Lord is my shepherd. What does that mean? We're his sheep. He's providing us everything we need. He's providing us what we need to eat. He's providing us what we need to live, to clothe ourselves, everything in our life. He's the one who ultimately has to provide it. And then notice at the end of that verse, it says, I shall not want. I shall not want. How many times do we look and say we want things from God? Let's just be honest. That's, that's, that's pretty frequently. When we say, God, man, you know, it'd be nice to have this or nice to have that or, you know, nice to be able to do this. But the reality of it is, I don't think there's many of us in here who have wanted so much that we've gone hungry for days on end. Every now and again, I skip lunch, but when I skip lunch, it's because I'm busy at work, not because I don't have what it takes to eat. And I'm thankful God is the provider of everything that we need. And here's the reality of it. We want things that aren't necessarily needs. What do we want? We, we, we pull a Creflo dollar and we want a jet or we want this or we want that. I, I worked for a company one time that had a private jet. And uh, was told when I got to go down to the Tampa office for them, I'd have gotten to fly on the private jet. The only problem was I never had to go to Tampa as long as I worked there. So I never got to fly on the private jet. And uh, I'm waiting 
I'm waiting on the day when they open up a position as a pilot for me to fly that thing. You know, I might, might, might be willing to look at that job and take that job, but we can want things, we can want planes, we can want cars, we can want nice houses, we can want lands, we can want all of this. But the reality of it is when God is our shepherd and when we're trusting in Him and when we're getting everything we need from Him, it'll make us learn to not want certain things. What is that not wanting that we get? It's simply this, that the needs and the blessings God gives us far outshines anything else that we would really want in this life. You know, if, you, if I could go tomorrow and I had no budget, I'd be pulling up into a GMC dealership and I'd have a 2500 GMC Sierra HD fully loaded. I mean, that thing would just be perfect. Would I like to have one? Yeah. 15 years ago, would I have gone and bought one? Maybe. But you know what I've learned now? I like to be content with the blessings that God's given me. I like to be content with the needs that he's met for me. Because there's one thing for certain, I take much more pleasure in the blessings God's given me that money couldn't buy than I do in the physical things that he's given me. And that's what he does as our shepherd. He makes our needs go away. So in reality, what else would we want? When we've got Jesus, he's sufficient for everything that we need. Verse number two, and I'm going to get to the verse I want to here in a minute. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. See, God provides our needs, but here's the other part of that. God knows what our needs are. God anticipates when we need rest. Half the time I figure out, I think that's why I get sick, because that's the only time I lay down. And sometimes God, I feel like, has to knock me over on my side so that I'll lay down and I'll be with Him. But, but, but God, God knows what we need. As our shepherd, He makes us to lie down in green pastures. What is that green pastures? That's rest for a sheep. That's rest. God understands that we're not like he is. While we serve a God who doesn't need rest, who doesn't have to sleep, who, who uh, is uh, never away. I believe it was when uh, Elijah, um, if I remember right, or Elisha was uh, up on, uh, my goodness, my, my, my mind's messed up. When he was up on Mount Carmel and they start offering those sacrifices and he's got the prophets of Baal and he says, well, maybe he's gone on a journey or maybe he's asleep or maybe he's this when they're talking about Baal. And, and the, 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 uh, what, we, what we understand about our God is our God's never asleep. Our God's never not available. Right. But you know what our God knows about us? He knows we need our rest. He knows what we need. And He'll provide us what we need to have those needs met. But then He leads me beside the still waters. You know what that water signifies? Still waters signify one of two things. Either the Word of God or the Spirit of God. But both of them are needed. He gives that to us. We know what we need. We read the Word of God to get what we need. We pray and ask God for the things that we need. Verse number 3, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. Notice this last part, for His name's sake. Again, what's the ultimate goal of a shepherd? To provide everything that the sheep needs. I don't, I've seen videos of shepherds before. And actually, one of my, one of my buddies, he, uh, he graduated from the Bible college with us he's on our board and uh, his name's Zach Holtz he pastors um oh man I can't remember the name of the church he pastors now but it's it's way up yonder somewhere up in far northeast Georgia <coughs> but Zach actually tended sheep through his teenage years when he was in Bible college getting his degree he was keeping sheep for his uh, granddaddy's farm and he learned a whole lot about sheep during that. And here's, here's one of the things he told me that, that never stuck with me. He said, we never really do things for sheep that they want because we don't want them to get too comfortable in what they have. He said, we, we want them to have their needs. But he said, it's not like we go and go over the top for the sheep. They're sheep. But we serve a God that's, that, that it feels like has gone over the top for us. But, but notice what he says here. He's given us what we need in this. And that he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. See, when we follow God, ultimately what we're trying to do is give Him a good name. It's not my name that I'm building. It's not the name of a church that I try to build. It's the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and to uplift Christ and to give everything that we have unto Christ. That should ultimately be our goal and everything that we do should be to uplift Christ. And ultimately, <coughs> those paths of righteousness, that's where God wants us to be. His will is for each of us to be as righteous as we possibly can. Are any of us going to attain complete righteousness? No. Not on this side of eternity. 
I'm going to mess up. I'm going to make mistakes. Just ask my wife. I can mess up like that. One of my biggest things, when I start driving, I get out on the road and I get so mad at people and it drives me insane. And I, I want to sit there and, and, and be angry and be mad. And thankfully, the Lord's helped me a lot with that here lately. And, and, and Tara's the same way. She, she's the same way. Stuff, stuff gets us irritated and we want to lash back out. And we want to get mad at people who really it isn't their fault anyway. And uh, yesterday she had a pickup order from a store and she sat in the parking lot for 45 minutes after she checked in. And finally they figured out somebody had cleared her order out of the system and they didn't know what they were doing. Well, she told them I got another 10 minutes and they said, we'll have it out within 10 minutes. They never showed up. So she, she left and went on. So she got on a little chat thing and she was sitting there messaging people. And after everything was said and done, the person opened the chat back up and said, can I tell you one more thing? And she said, sure. She didn't know something about the order or not. But she said, I wanted to say thank you for how you handled the situation because most people would have blown up on me. And you didn't. And, and see, that, that's, that's where God leads us in that passive righteousness because think about this. This person has my wife's name. You search us on Facebook, it's pretty easy to figure out where we go to church. It's pretty easy to figure out that she's a pastor's wife. I've mentioned this before. There's a, there's a pastor of a very prominent church up north of here. And I mean, a mega, mega church, huge church. But his wife and his children have gotten known by the reputation that they leave behind at places. And let me just say, it's not a reputation that we should want as children of God. It's a reputation that we shouldn't want. He leads us in those paths of righteousness. Why? Because his name is the name that we bear. Verse number four. Yea, through a, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In the valley of the shadow of death, it doesn't, doesn't sound like a wonderful place to, to live in. That was actually a, a literal place um, over, over in the Holy Land. But that valley of the shadow of death, when we walk through those valleys, and, and those valleys may, may look like we can't get out. And, and, and that's, a, that, that's an interesting part about valleys. Is sometimes they seem so insurmountable, you can't climb where you're going to. We... Uh, we, we used to camp and hunt all the time up north of Dahlonega and uh, up near the Ranger, Army Ranger camp up there. And uh, we, we went up to where we used to, to hunt at. But when I was a kid, you used to be able to ride or drive trucks back there, pretty much whatever you want. And they put up gates on these logging roads now. So we got to where we normally were camping, and that's where the gate was. And then we would drive another couple of miles into the woods. And uh, that, that's where we would drive to, and then we would get out and walk, you know, a good five, six hundred yards down to where our, our deer stand was. Well, this particular time, we had to park at that gate. We couldn't go any further. So we walked several miles in, and me and, me and Ben Tanner and several of us decided to walk up the side of the ridge. We were down in the valley, right where the river kind of runs through down there, and we decided to walk up on the ridge and see what we could uh, see. We were squirrel hunting that particular day, so... We decided to walk up that ridge to see what we could see. And you know what we learned about halfway up? Sometimes when you're in the valley, this is something real interesting and understand what I'm trying to say here. Sometimes when you're down in the valley and you begin to climb out, you almost think it's insurmountable to get out of that valley. You almost think you can't make it. We were huffing. We were puffing. We were out of breath. Ben Tanner turned around and looked at me about three quarters of the way up and said, you think there's a milkshake stand at the top? And I told him, I, I wouldn't get your hopes up. You know, we made it up out of the valley. And when we got up out of the valley and we looked down at the valley that we were in, it didn't seem like that far down. It didn't seem like we were in that bad of shape. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. No matter what valleys bring to our lives, no matter what sorrows we walk through, what depressions we walk through, we can understand that we've got the Lord with us. And because of that, we don't have to fear the evil. Think about it. What's the absolute worst thing that could happen to somebody? Death? You know, they'll say it's pretty bad. Yeah. It's not like I'm looking to die tomorrow. That's, that's none of our goals. You know, in fact, we do everything we can to stave death off. We do everything we can to flee from death. We don't want death. Now understand, I'm not afraid of death in the terms of where I'm going. I'm afraid of the process of it. I don't want to quit breathing. I like breathing. I don't want my heart to quit beating. I like my heart beating. But at some point in time, death's going to come. And even with death, even what we consider to be 
the finality of, it, uh, of, of our life here in the beginning of eternity, even in the midst of that valley, we can fear no evil. Why? Notice what that next part says, for thou art with me. When he's with us, we're not afraid. When he's with us, we don't have to fear. When he's with us, we're going to make it through. It's just like the disciples in the boat. And Jesus is asleep on the pillow in the hinder part of the ship. And they get really terrified because the storm blows up. And Jesus is sleeping in the back. Why is Jesus asleep in the back? Because he knows we're going to be fine. But they wake him up in a panic. Do you not care that we perish? What do you do? And he, he, he comes out and says, peace be still, calms the seas. He was with them. They were still afraid though. We've got to understand when we're afraid... When God is not telling us to move, when God's not telling us to do anything, but yet we're still afraid of God, you know what that ultimately comes back to is unbelief. Right. We're ultimately saying, God, I just don't believe you enough to get me through the circumstance that I'm in. God, I just don't believe you enough to make it. He will be there. Look at this. He says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That rod and that staff were two completely separate things. The rod would have been used for discipline. The staff would have been used for guiding and for leading and God disciplines us, and at the same time, God will lead us. Now, that rod's not something we like. I didn't like getting whoopings when I was a kid. Not a fan of them. Zero out of ten. Would not recommend as a child. I didn't like it, but looking back on my life now, I'm thankful for the times when my dad pulled his belt off and whooped me. You say, well, how could you be happy about that? How could you be glad about that? Because it taught me some lessons that I needed to know to grow to be the man that, that, that God has allowed me to be. Those lessons, those uh, bruisings, those whippings that I got, they ended up making me better later on. You know what? I look back and I take comfort in those now. That's the same thing being said here by the psalmist. Is thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Even though God's chastisement might hurt from time to time, I'm glad he's willing to. And here's how I can take comfort in God's chastisement. Because it, it, and I'll, 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 I'll just pick and use, use her as an example. I'm not going to take Skylin and go whoop her. I'm not going to take you and whoop her. Your daddy's trying to hand you to me. That's so sad. There's no way. I'll just do fist bumps instead. Yeah, there we go. I made a comment about getting on with a little one yesterday. And Brother Cody started getting a little antsy at Bible college. And I'm like, it's okay. Like, it's fine. He can get in trouble. It's all right. You know what the difference is, though? This one's not mine. That one's not his. So you know what? I treat them differently. If God is not chastising us when we do something wrong, there's a reason why. And it's likely because we're not his. We can take comfort in the fact of the chastisement and the peace of God that he gives us through that staff. And that can give us comfort because we ultimately know that we're his. Verse number five, this is the one that's kind of captured my mind here a little bit here lately. He said, thou prepared us a table before me. In the presence of mine enemies. I've, uh, you know, that, that seems kind of bizarre because, you know, people who are at war typically aren't thinking about food. Yeah. In, in their mind, that's not the first thing that comes out. There's some people that probably would. I would be one of those sitting there, you know, shooting in battle thinking, man, I'm hungry. <laughs> I know people think that in church. That's just a reality of it. You know, we're in the Christian battle, Christian service, but about... 11.59, all of our stomachs start grumbling, wondering what's for lunch. But you don't see people who are in the midst of battle, who are in the midst of fighting the enemies, and then spreading out a table to eat lunch. You just don't see that. But what has God done here? He says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. In the midst of our enemies, God's provided us enough peace, enough comfort. We can sit down and enjoy a meal. Much less in the presence of enemies because enemies, what are they going to try to do? Ultimately, enemies look they want to kill you. And, and you know, I, I'm, I'm careful. I sniff my coffee real good in the morning if Tara makes it. I want to make sure she hasn't slipped something in there to send me from here to eternity and collect on some insurance money. I'm, you know, joking on that. But the, <coughs> when we, <laughs> we tend, and I say this and literally just go, you know, to restaurants and get food. But we don't tend to trust strangers as much with our food. Understand, I mean, I, I like knowing what's in mine. I like cooking it. I like knowing what's there. But much less somebody who's trying to kill me. Am I going to eat something at their house? Probably not. But yet God has prepared a table 
for them in the midst of their enemies. It's amazing how God can take what would seem like a really, really terrible situation for us to be in and yet make us so comfortable that we're willing to sit down and eat and just enjoy things. Even though we're in the presence of the enemies, thou anointest my head with oil. A cup runneth over another type of the spirit there, being anointed with oil to the point that my cup runneth over. And I'm so glad that God sees fit to give me so much of my needs that it makes my cup run over. And I can just look back and say, God, I'm so blessed. Let me wrap this up. Verse number six. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I heard it put one time that uh, I know goodness and mercy, but where's this Shirley lady that's following me around? I'm trying to figure out who she is. I'm just you know, kidding. But the uh, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. When we look at what God's done for us, all we can stand and say is that God's been good and God's been merciful. If we look back across our life, there's not a single time when I can look and say, God, you did me wrong. God, you did me wrong. Now, there's a whole list of people I could bring up and tell you, hey, well, they did this wrong, and they did this wrong, and they did that wrong, and they did this wrong. But you know, e even in the midst of some of my most tragic situations I've seen happen in my life, I can't look at God and say, God, it's your fault. I can't look at God and say, God, you weren't good. God, you weren't merciful. He always is. And His goodness and His mercy are going and they're following us as we go. And, and, and when, when, you, when you think of that, I want you to think of a young child and you know us as children of God. And, and when the little guy goes running around places, I tend to follow him, especially now that I know he knows how to open door handles. As long as it's not a knob, we're safe. Thankfully, thankfully we have knobs at our house. He can open handles, but I follow him around everywhere he goes when he's not in my arms. And here's the reason why. I want to be there for him when he falls. I want to be there to keep him from getting hurt. And I want to be there to protect him. God's mercy and God's goodness follows us. Why would God's mercy follow us? Ultimately, guess what he knows? We're going to stumble. We're going to fall. We're going to slip up. We're going to mess things up. It's going to happen. And that last part, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm so thankful that in the worst of circumstances, our shepherd has prepared us a place where we can spend eternity with him. As we went with uh, and, and spent some time with Miss Wanda earlier this week. I, you know, wanted to look at her and say, I know how you feel, but I, I don't know how she feels. Never lost a child. And, and we oftentimes want to say things like that. And, I, you know, I was able to tell her, I, I know somebody who did lose a child. And I know he loves you very much. And if you'll pray to him, I'm sure he'll give you some help. That being God. But, but here's the, 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 the ultimate reality I can give her. Is this, that when she said goodbye to her daughter on Sunday night. She didn't say goodbye forever. She just said goodbye for a little while. When her daughter slipped from time into eternity, by her testimony, we know where she is. By Miss Wanda's testimony, we know where she's heading. They'll be together. And I'm glad that we have the house of the Lord to dwell in forever. I'm glad we have that. I, I love the peace and comfort of being able to go to houses. My, my mom and dad's house, I... I we don't, we're so busy, we don't get over there too often. But when we go to my mom and dad's house, their house is a place I feel completely comfortable. When I walk in my mom and dad's house, if I want something to drink, I go to the refrigerator and I grab it. If I want a snack, I go to the pantry and get it. If I want lemon pepper, I go to the cabinet and get it. I made Tara laugh. She's making fun of me back there. For those of you who don't know, I have a really bad habit of eating lemon pepper. I don't know why, but I just, I go for it when I get to my parents' house. When I'm at my parents' house, I feel comfortable. I feel at home. Now, a lot of times when I show up to other people's house, I don't do that. When I went to Miss Beverly's house on Monday to see Miss Wanda, I didn't run to her refrigerator and grab me something to drink. I know Miss Beverly well enough that I asked her something to drink. She'd have gotten me something. But I was in a stranger's house. It wasn't my parents' house. It wasn't my father's house. And I'm glad we've got a place that God's prepared us where we're going to be at comfort. When the cares of this life, the troubles of this life are going to be no more. And we'll be there to dwell with him forever. And ultimately, 
Here's the truth we have in it. Because he's our shepherd, we know we've got a permanent place where we're going to be. One of the major needs that we have as a people is knowing what our future and eternity is. You know what? Jesus has provided that. He's given us an ultimate eternity in heaven that we can look to and we can say, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thankful for these truths we have in us kind of scattered and kind of off the wall just where I felt my heart was for this evening. But I appreciate you being here. Appreciate your attention tonight. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. And uh, no, no I, I do ask one question. Everybody don't rush the back door at once. We don't want to hurt anybody. I know it's quite a large crowd here this evening. So, But y'all pray for those that are not here. And, uh, uh, and, and that's, that, that's, that's quite a few. My boys are looking around like, what, what, what? I, and earlier, I, I couldn't figure out whether or not we had actually gone live on Facebook. So I pulled up the Facebook app on my phone. I had tapped it. And uh, I, on, the, on the screen was a prior, was the service from Sunday night. And uh, I was like, okay, we're not live. But I left it on. I didn't, you know, lock my phone because I was playing the piano. And uh, here after a little bit, when I looked back over, it showed the sanctuary. And I was like, oh, we must be live. And then I saw one of my boys walk across the front of the church up here. And I was sitting there like, what are they doing out of their seat? And then I looked to the left and they were in their seat. It was the service from Sunday night I was watching. And I was just all kinds of confused and mixed up. But appreciate you being here tonight. Remember those prayer requests, especially Miss Wanda's family. I believe that uh, funeral visitation is going to be next week. It sounds like next Saturday. Not this one, but the next. So y'all pray for them as they, um, they prepare for that uh, here over the next uh, days and weeks ahead. It's going to be difficult for them. It's going to be a hard, hard hill to climb. But... Uh, just uh, remember Miss Wanda in your prayers. Uh, remember her husband in your prayers as well. And that uh, God would just give them peace and comfort during this time. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed. Brother Cody, would you care to dismiss us?